Hi, I'm Paula Stern, and I'm representing today the National Center for Women and Information Technology, which the NSF founded about 18 or 19 years ago when we saw that we were going to have all the shortages um, specifically in computing science and in information technology. So this, my question is following really uh, prompted by you with your observations of who uh, is participating in that subsets critically important for innovation uh, in the whole STEM field. Um, and I would like you to address uh, the uh, problem that while we have increased the number of women uh, as well as men uh, who are computer science trained and uh, able to participate and give back to the future uh, through innovation, uh, the percentage of women is still stuck at 24%. Um, and what it, uh, it, why that might be, even though we've increased the number, and I do think because of NCWIT studies, it has so much to do with culture, particularly corporate culture, and particularly the tech teams, because they are not retaining these. Now, we, we have uh, counselors in, in computing within the high schools around the nation trying to tell about opportunities, um, but uh, I would really love to hear uh, your observation on really the corporate world, not just uh, on the um, uh, factory floor, if you will, um, but really in also the tech teams that are uh, creating the new digital future. Thank you very much, and thank you for the uh, opportunity to comment on that particular uh, arena and try to really go down deep. Yeah, no, I will say I think you're right that a lot of it is culture and different corporate culture. And we know I'm going to step back into education because that's what I know a little bit better. Um, but we know that a sense of belonging is so important to, again, think about four-year students in particular, but two-year students as well in students' retention in college, their completion of their degree, and whether or not they're going to persist in a major. A lot of the sense of belonging comes from having mentors in the field that you can point to and who understand what you're going through. And so as we increase the share of women faculty in STEM, of black faculty in STEM, Hispanic, Native faculty in STEM, so that students can look to a faculty and see a pathway for them, that's so important to building a sense of belonging and pathway. Um, you know, we know at the high school level how effective it is to have a same race teacher. Um, and how valuable black teachers are, not just to black students, but to all students in the classroom. And we actually had a great piece on Chalkboard recently about how black teachers help white teachers, you know, better understand the culture of their students and, and just how impactful that is. And so if we then translate to policy, you know, how do we incentivize entry into the teaching profession? How do we incentivize that for folks who are trained in STEM where they have such competing external options, you know, if you have a, a chemistry major, it's, it can be hard to say, I'll be a teacher versus I'm going to, you know, do a chemistry field. Part of that is paying teachers better. Part of that is maybe structuring financial aid. So there are incentives to become a teacher, to work in certain districts. Um, I think there are a lot of levers that we have to encourage folks to enter into teaching and to build that, you know, sense of mentorship and, and people that students can look to as they think about their careers.